So I had the opportunity to uh, come out and hunt for a second time in Africa. We came back to Zimbabwe, to the Save Reserve. Last year I had the opportunity to take down a very nice Cape Buffalo. It was roughly killed in five days. And I shot the Cape Buffalo last year on the fifth day right at dusk. Hunting buffalo is not just about picking a spot and shooting it, it's about the way you step, uh, hearing the sounds of your own footfalls as you step. It's about hearing all the other people around you. It's about acknowledging where your, where your gun is pointing. It's about being safe. Yeah, they come. Back. So this trip, we came back to Hammond Ranch, which is in the Savi Valley. It's in the south side of the Sabi Valley Conservancy. These areas are very well protected with all of the anti-poaching teams. It's a beautiful, beautiful area. And I'm so, so blessed that I get to do what I love. I get to meet people from all walks of life and I get to do the thing that I love the most with them. And when you put two people together who share the same passion, it truly is, it's just an experience whether you have a good time, whether you have a bad time, I'm just very blessed to do what I love. So on this trip, they came back to Zimbabwe, came back to the Save Reserve to once again hunt Cape Buffalo. We hunted with Hallamore Hunts, an exceptional group of PHs, and also in the mix of the bunch was Tanya Blake with Blake Safaris, who is actually my PH. She's a female in Zimbabwe and is an excellent PH. She knows her stuff. So this morning we're driving along and we have found where we thought was a lone dugger boy that crossed the road. But after we've scouted around all of the tracks and stuff, the boys have figured out that there's actually a herd that's crossed over. So and while they were scouting around looking for them, they heard them, you know, in the herd, they often like, Brr, how they bump into each other and stuff. So we're gonna go have a little sneak peek and see if there's any bulls lagging at the back that we can maybe take a shot into. You really shot a really nice bull here last year, so it's gonna be hard to top him, but we're gonna give it a bash. Let's go for it. So Herschel's one of those people that he believes in the true hunt and that's why it's such a pleasure to hunt with him. Hunting is not about just shooting the first buffalo that you come across, and I'm truly blessed that Herschel completely understands that. Are you loaded on same? Yes. Okay. Just concentrate on your hole. Unlike where you're walking in your quiet. You have to understand what all of these factors sound like walking through the bush. Um, and thankfully, you know, Herschel is experienced because he did this last year. So all of the gear that he, he wears and stuff, he's worn it before, he knows how it feels, he knows how it sounds, and it sounds like petty things, but at the end of the day, those are the things in the buildup of the shot that really make you successful or not. That's hard hunting, looking for that one particular animal out of all the animals. And we were very, very close, and it just was not at all what we were looking for. So, cool. yeah, he's a cold bull, not what we're looking for. Um, but, yeah, nice to see them anyways. Watch your, watch your. That's it. <laughs> Elephant's breaking on the tree. Elephant, uh, you know, animals that we hugely respect. Bonnie, this one's cheeky. It's not like some busy valley. This one's from Connor, so yeah, just be careful. This one will charge you. You know, we were so focused on our buffalo and you have to remember at the end of the day that no matter what you're trying to do, you have to respect every little piece of the flora and fauna that's around you. Yes, sir. 
Cat track. Yes, sir. You can see the the three little lobes at the back. One, two, three. On the pad, the back foot. It's actually a young male. We were lucky enough to see one yesterday. So, so far you're having a very lucky safari, my friend. Oh, I know. Yep. <laughs> you know, in the beginning, we kind of, we kind of just, you know, old friends coming together, the whole team back together, lots of camaraderie, lots of fun. Do you recognize this tree, Hirsch? Yes, I do. Remember we found the, the wild dog skull here last year? The Savi Valley is such a special place because it has an abundance of not only the dangerous game, but a lot of the planes game. Two kudu. Yeah, it was a female and a baby. But, you know, this time of the day, things like bushbuck, kudu, clip springers, all those little things, they move around because the predators are normally sleeping in the heat of the day. We were so, so, so blessed to be able to hunt in these beautiful areas. It really is a stunning place. The anti-poaching is well up to speed. There's, there's loads and loads of game. The operators that we work with are very, very accommodating and it's such a pleasurable experience, honestly. We were happy to be home again. Nice and peaceful, aren't you? Can you see lion tracks, <laughs> zebra tracks, buffalo tracks, you could make some tracks, your, leopard tracks? You could make some in your backyard. <laughs> when you are hunting buffalo, it tends to be a lot of walking. And if you are not used to your shoes or comfortable in your shoes, you can find yourself getting a lot of blisters, feeling uncomfortable. And when your feet hurt, the biggest thing that you need to know is that a person who is in pain or uncomfortable is a loud person and when you're hunting buffalo a loud person is not really a successful person. Carefully, slowly, gently. Like a boys you have to be much more quieter than a third because obviously they just do of them. They're very sensitive to noise. Like just put your feet softly and roll. Now uh, as Chan would say Stop walking like an elephant through the through the jungle. Stop sweeping every branch and stop crunching every leaf and moving every rock. And so it became the uh, like the Pink Panther walk or the Abbeville Road uh, walk for the Beatles, where everyone is in step, 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 and you're trying to minimize the noise so that you can actually sneak up on Cape Buffalo. Herschel is not your average Joe. He is what I would like to call a good friend. You can have some if you want to find the buffalo. You must be a buffalo. You must smell like the buffalo. <laughs> like Tatanka. Now, I <laughs> apparently smell like a buffalo, so it's easier for me to track a buffalo, along with the face art. He truly appreciates everything that, that the bush has to offer, from what birds we're seeing all day, to the squirrels, to the bugs, to whatever you know, signs we find in the bush in the morning, whether it's tracks or you know, uh, dung left from the night before. Herschel is a trooper in the sense that he doesn't just come to you know, hunt for the size. There's another one that's joined. So this year we were really looking for something that was super, super old, not necessarily the biggest, baddest old buffalo, but we just wanted a really, really old, old yeah. bull. There you go. See where there's like the little Mabani trees? It looks like a black thing on the ground. That's where they're laying down. So what they're probably gonna do is get up and come here because it's so hot today and have another drink. So if we just back up a little bit, they should come
We, we pulled up our socks and we really, really got into some good buffalo. We just couldn't find a solid bull. And rather than take something that is young and still breeding and still has a lot of life to give, we decided to do the ethical thing and keep searching for the old, old bulls. We passed up numerous, numerous bulls, some bulls that were on the line, but at the end of the day, Herschel understands the drive behind being ethical and doing the right thing for the right reasons. Saw many, many animals, sometimes herds in 200, 300, and sometimes herds in 50, and sometimes herds in 12, and sometimes dug a boys three and four at a time. There were times when we were on the Cape Buffalo within 12 yards. The only thing that was, uh, you know, not conducive to us shooting anything was the fact that the Cape Buffalo that we saw were not the big Duggle boys that we were looking for. So the gun that I carry is not just a regular 95 gun doing its job. My gun has been passed down from my grandfather to my father to me. My dad said to me, the day you qualify is the day that I'll put this gun in your name. And growing up, I shot it a lot of times and it's, it's taken many a dangerous game in its, in its lifespan. So I'm very, very proud of my gun. It is a 416 Rigby made by Ruger. I just honestly believe that it doesn't kick at all, but I'm so excited every time I get to shoot it that I feel that my bull barrel just holds me down and she just gives me a gentle push. Um, I genuinely don't think that I would ever be happy to carry anything else. Not only am I carrying my family and the people that mean the most to me every day, but it's, it's such a sentimental thing and I'm very, very blessed um, to be able to push some really, really good quality swift bullets through her. And I know that she's my solid, she's my rock. We'll come back this afternoon when the wind settles and we'll give it another bash. There were a couple of times we actually saw the animal that was of shootable size, but the uh, opportunity was lost either by time and daylight or the animals were spooked by something else that was not us. I would tell anybody that's coming to Africa to not just uh, take on the strong attitude and the diligent attitude and I'm going to get this done and accomplish this goal. Also bring your humor, bring your laughter, bring the enjoyment, bring the ability to look at Africa and see how beautiful it is, the beautiful things that you can see as you look around how cool and how lucky and blessed are we. There was this beautiful Grace Buck and she was 
just doing her thing. And I actually honestly believe that she might not have seen a human before because she was so relaxed. She was heavily pregnant. It's called her grace book. It's very rare, it's part of the tiny thing. She just stood there for the longest time and she scratched and she looked at us and she fed a little bit. She's so relaxed. And those are the moments that you know, you're so driven and you're so focused and you're so boiled into the buffalo and suddenly something comes along How cool is that? and brings you back down to speed to be like, hey, also appreciate all the little things and what you're seeing and what you're doing. Because to be that close to such a shy little animal was wild. One of the coolest things about what we get to do all day is the pink panther stalking around the bush and everybody's giving everybody the dirtiest looks you can imagine because you stepped on a stick, you stepped on a this, blah, 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 blah. But every now and then you, you stumble into something that takes your breath away. I didn't even look at him. I couldn't move. <laughs> <laughs> Think that was close enough? <laughs> you tell me. Right to us. Come, come. There will be some of the rarest moments of your life is there's all this pressure, such seriousness, everybody's like focused in full, complete mode, and suddenly. Boom, <laughs> oh my god. Are <laughs> oh, you having fun yet? Hell yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, there's nothing. Shit, or something. <laughs> so it was a choice to not choose uh, to shoot something of lesser caliber, which uh, made for a lot longer uh, walking. And so that's what we, what we did. We went 10 full days. Morning and evening, walking, looking for a Cape Buffalo. Herschel spoke about it numerous times last year that one of his greatest loves is bird shooting. And last year we were actually just so busy with our buffalo and our zebra and all our other things <laughs> that we didn't actually have time to get into some good bird shooting. How many can it fit? It can fit 12 or 13, something like that. <laughs> I was like, what the bloody hell is this? How do you know when it's full? They'll stop taking it. It's one of those pieces of the puzzle that sometimes you miss because you're so caught up in all of the big things that you forget the little things. Where were you aiming? Looks like got a nice scope on that damn thing. It's so small. <laughs> okay. All right, ready to go. You on safe? Yes. Herschel, having taken a beautiful buffalo last year, 
There was not a lot of pressure for us to, to nail down all of the big things. We took a lot of time to enjoy the little things. And I feel like the safari was about reminiscing and really catching up on all the good little things. And we are now going to shoot Franklin in the head. That's why we practice, right? Yeah, I gotta work. Oh. And whether we are shooting stuff, whether we're not shooting stuff, we always just in general are having a really good time. Well, this year we took some time, irrelevant of whatever else we were trying to hunt, to kick back, enjoy the sunset, appreciate all of the elements that were around us. The thing that I love about hunting the most is that, first of all, I get to do what I love every day. And if you love what you do, you don't work a day in your life, so. So it was an exceptional time, an exceptional pH that I had that was a lot of fun to walk with. Uh, during the serious times, we were serious, and during the fun times, there was laughter. Uh, the trackers that are with Tanya are exceptional, and it was a lot of fun to hunt with her and her team. We had some good, good laughs. It was good fun, and Herschel made some great shots on some Franklin, which we thankfully had the most delicious snacks later. Your first African animal this trip. Yeah, gee. Might be a little bit of guts in there. We were able to shoot this with a 22 swift bullet. How lucky are we to have such good ammo to use? How lucky are we to have such good ammo? <laughs> okay, let's do it again. But like shoot another, another one. one? Hell yeah. Yeah. It's just an experience whether you have a good time, whether you have a bad time. Um, you're still doing something together with somebody and I think that that's something that not a lot of people get to do anymore and I'm just very blessed to do what I love. So Mike has hunted Africa several times, but never hunted the Sabe uh, Reserve. So my friend David and I encouraged him uh, to come. That is a beaut. It's got the big boss, it's got the big drop, it's got the big horns. Boy, that is, that's everything. He came and he was actually able to shoot an excellent buffalo, which was in 42 inch uh, range. Wasn't all my shot. I only shot once. It was four shots and then one more. That wasn't me. Really? I shot once and then I put one in his, his heart while he was laying down. He was already dead. He was so excited, so happy. He was so joyous to welcome him back at camp with his beautiful kill in the back of the truck. And it had the wonderful buff smile with the teeth all hanging out and beautiful, beautiful horns and curl. Here's to Mike. Mike. <laughs> Years in the making, moments in the memory. Right here. One, one hell of a hunt. Well done. Dean deserves the credit and his boys. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Look at that smile. Now you in the limelight. Don't run away from me. Nah, I don't like those damn things. <laughs> so we were so excited. We were high-fiving. We were bouncing drinks and having a great old grand time for Mike. These guys put on a great, great hunt. I have Lou and I have, Lou, and I have, I have Clive to thank for that. They got gin and tonic to go, too. I got one. Oh my gosh. I'm... Come on, Mike, Mike, I gotta get you another drink. I learned that safari means journey, the challenge, the uh, camaraderie. You, you could land an ultralight between those horns. Wow. <laughs> the opportunity to be in God's country, to look at animals, to actually cross where wild animals' footprints are with your own footprints, and just enjoying the experience and the thrill of true hunting. We had so much fun on the last safari. 
But there was one thing that we just could not grasp was a clip springer. And it's now funnily known as the grace of the clip springer. And we tried and we tried and Herschel had a couple of shots at some clip springers and unfortunately he missed. I actually shot twice at it, but missed the clip springer twice and then poof, he was gone. We all miss if anybody says that they don't miss from time to time, big fat liar. Ironically, this year we were on the, on the hunt for the buffalo, obviously, and literally we drove past this giant copy of rocks and there was just this beautiful clip springer bull. We jumped off, got in position, and Herschel did such a perfect shot. Quick clean kill, exactly what we wanted, and the curse of the clip springer is finally gone. So we are thrilled about that, and we just had such a ball, and it was such a beautiful clip springer. There it is. And it's something that Herschel is going to cherish forever, just because he's had such a build up to it, and finally some success. Okay, so. How crazy is this, my friend? <laughs> Last year, Herschel actually tried twice at a clip springer, um, and he was very unlucky, unlucky in love with his clip springer. So, just rocking around, we've Buffalo been working us over, but we're very, very lucky to be able to take this beautiful clip springer bull, and it couldn't have gone more perfect if you tried. You made a great shot. Very, very, very blessed to take such an incredible animal. They really are awesome. So. Beautiful. Good shooting, my friend. Well done. As you stand there and you walk in Africa and making every single footfall, twig snap, rock move, foot placement, footfall, it was incredible to see all the things that you have to take seriously, diligently, to try to get in the perfect position to take a worthy trophy animal with one shot, two shots, three shots, but you will not get the opportunity if you cannot get close. It takes all of your diligence, all of your abilities, and your team's abilities to put you in position to capture that trophy that you feel is worthy to take back home. Time out. Game over. Let's go. I'm not done with Africa. I'm coming back. I learned that safari means journey. Although the second journey was not as productive as the first journey, it doesn't make it any less more impactful in my life. And I will be back in completing the journey. The thing that I love about hunting the most is that the world is changing every day and the way we used to do things as opposed to the way that we do things now, it changes not only on a daily basis, but we as humans, we evolve and we change with it. So for me, you can have all the money in the world or you can have no money at all, but when you are out in the field and out in the bush, you are the purest version of yourself because it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you come from or where you're going or what you have or what you don't have. The animals react just the same as they do to a billionaire that they do to a person who saved his whole life. So for me to be able to be around people in their purest form is, is such a blessing because at the end of the day, the way the world is changing, it's hard to actually get something at face value and it means a hell of a lot for me to, to live my life in a pure and honest way. And I think that when you're out in the field, the joys, the failures, the celebrations, the, the, the moments where you wish that things would go different and they don't, is when you truly see people's true colors. And to be around people when they are only showing their true colors is such a rare privilege. You know, hunting, hunting doesn't always end up in shooting. And I think that that's the biggest lesson that we can take away from this. We hunted very, very hard. We were on buffalo in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening. But we were genuinely looking for something that was old. We saw hundreds and hundreds of buffalo. 
but sadly this was not a successful kill but it was definitely a successful hunt. That's the buffalo that we want to shoot. The one who did that. A giant part of business if I ever saw it. Damn. It's like a minefield. <laughs>